In this module, we will discuss steady state error. In the previous module, we began to discuss how to design controllers. In particular, we designed our controllers in order to achieve a certain transient response. In this module, we will discuss how to achieve a certain steady state response. In particular, how to achieve a certain level of steady state error. So here we have a typical output response for a dynamic system. And so far in the course, we've learned that the transient response of a system is dictated by the location of its poles and zeros. Where the transient response is sort of when the system's response is changing and the location of the poles and zeros define aspects of this transient behavior, things like overshoot, settle time, and peak time. It's also important, however, to achieve a certain steady state behavior. So in this example where the input is a constant, the steady state behavior is defined by the final value reached by the, by the system's response. And so we know that we can determine the final value of a system's response employing the final value theorem. In particular, y steady state is equal to the limit as s approaches 0 of s times y of s, where y is the output. And so in addition to achieving a certain transient response, we also want to achieve a certain steady state response, in particular, to achieve a certain limit on the steady state error. We've actually already calculated steady state error in some previous modules and previous examples. And the way that we did that was simply to apply the final value theorem. E steady state is equal to the limit as s approaches 0 of s times e of s, where e of s is the difference between, in essence, the command and the output. So we have some reference r, which is our desired output, and we compare it to the actual output, and the difference between those two is the error. In some previous examples, it's turned out that this signal was equal to the error. That's not true in general. In particular, it's not true because h of s actually modifies the output. So this signal isn't actually r minus y. It's r minus, in essence, a measurement of y. And so if h of s has dynamics or h of s has a steady state value that's not equal to 1, then this signal will be distorted and it won't be the true error. That's OK, though, because we can still calculate what the true error is. In particular, we can calculate what y of s is by employing what we know about block diagrams. In particular, the transfer function for this negative feedback system can be reduced using the rule forward over 1 plus loop, where the forward path is g divided by 1 plus loop, where the feedback path is g times h. And so in order to calculate the output y of s, we simply take our transfer function and multiply r of s to the right-hand side. Substituting that in for y of s, we get an expression for e of s. One thing that we have to be a little bit careful of here when we're trying to determine the final value of the error is that in some cases the reference input could be going to infinity. For example, if our reference was a ramp. And so there we would have a situation where the reference is growing to infinity and the output could also be growing to infinity. And so when we take the limit, this term blows up and this term blows up. And to say infinity minus infinity doesn't really mean anything. It's what we call an indeterminate form. So these two could be both going to infinity, but the limit of the error could be 0, it could be infinity, or it could be some finite value. What really matters is the relative rates at which these two quantities go to infinity. So you could imagine a situation where you know, r is a ramp, and maybe y is growing to infinity, but it's growing to infinity at a different rate. And so the difference between the two, the error, 
is getting larger and larger and larger. But you could have a different situation where they grow at the same rate or where they even approach one another. So in order to be able to take this limit, keeping in mind this indeterminate form, in essence we need to get a common denominator between these two. And so the denominator of this term is 1 over g times h. And so if we imagine that there's a constant 1 multiplying this r, we can imagine it as 1 plus gh divided by 1 plus gh. Now we have a common denominator, and we can combine the two. So we have a denominator of 1 plus g h this common factor r. And here we have a numerator of 1 plus gh subtracting a numerator of g. And so if we rearrange e of s into this form, we can take the limit as s goes to 0, and we can get a conclusive understanding of the steady state error.